Hey, what is up everyone? We're back with another monthly update video. And in this video, we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about the April Sea of Thieves update. So this update is a little surprising to me. Season 12 is next week, next Tuesday. So I really figured they were just gonna wait to do the monthly update with season 12, but no, we got a monthly update today. So I think the main reason we got one today is because PlayStation 5 players now have early access starting today. So they needed to update the game to be able to, you know, do the cross platform and all sorts of stuff. So I'm not going to spend too much time on the PlayStation 5 stuff since really that's stuff we've already talked about in the other video that I did when we had the beta. And I'll link that video here if you want to see everything that's going on with the PlayStation version of the game. But just some notable things to highlight. There's the Microsoft account linking that's part of this. There's player names and online IDs. Essentially that just means like you'll see your PlayStation friends as well as your Microsoft friends both through Sea of Thieves so that you can play with, you know, anyone that you're connected to. So that's pretty cool. You also have the ability to invite friends, you know, either you know, in PlayStation or across platform and stuff. You know, just the pretty standard stuff. If you've played the Steam version of the game, it's going to be pretty similar to that. There's some other things. Performance on the PlayStation 5 version. It can run 60 FPS and 4K, as well as 120 Hz refresh at 1080p. So, interesting stuff there. And then the last notable thing with the PlayStation stuff is that player moderation. There's new player blocking tools in the game settings, which allows you to block players and it won't let them be able to communicate with you so you won't be able to hear them with in-game voice chat or text chat not really sure how helpful this is to be honest it doesn't really stop like what they're doing but i guess if you don't want to hear them anymore this is a nice feature all right moving on to some of the more interesting changes with this update this is something that i wasn't expecting to happen until season 12 officially released but the chest of fortune has been moved back to the fort of fortune so this is something that i'm happy with well i think it's cool to have a like a special treasure chest that's like very rare and stuff move between different world events and different things throughout you know each season but with the chest of fortune it just makes sense for it to be at the fort of fortune so i'm curious to see if they will continue to move it around or if this is where it's going to be permanently staying for now on and with this we have some new rewards for it with the fate of fortune lantern spyglass compass and bucket Similar to that, we also got expansion to the Reaper's Riches combination, which will now unlock you the Fate of Fortune banjo and drum. So some pretty cool updates with that. It's interesting to see that that was done a little bit early. Moving on, there's some gameplay improvements. This is kind of stuff that we're, you know, not too surprising to see because I feel like they say it every monthly update. But hit registration has been improved slightly, so it's going to be a little bit more accurate now. We'll see what happens with that, if that actually makes a difference. Another interesting one is skeleton ships and megalodon encounters. The frequency of emergent skeleton and ships and megalodons has been reduced to match the frequency of encounters prior to season 11. So that's interesting. I I feel like there might have been a slight increase, but I haven't really noticed too much of an increase of skeleton ships and megalodons more than what it used to be. But maybe I'm just kind of you know, not remembering it correctly. Next, we have a lot of stuff changing with the Outpost Cosmetics. I have a feeling that since these changes came with this update for Outpost Cosmetics, we are not likely to see much or any changes with Outpost Cosmetics with the Season 12 release. With that said, we have some new Outpost stock with the Seared Forsaken Ashes set, and this includes the ship set and clothing, which you can purchase for gold after unlocking the Warsmith of Flame accommodation. So, that's cool, I guess. I feel like I've we've seen a lot of this set already, not or just different variations of this set. This is another reskin of the Forsaken Ashes set that we've had. So at this point, I'm a little tired of seeing this set. I mean, there's only so many color palettes that you can do with each of these ship sets and clothing sets and everything before it gets kind of boring and old. One thing I do think is cool in the weapon shop is you have access to two new swords for the Forsaken Ashes set. These are available for doubloons after unlocking the Devil's Cartographer accommodation. Next we have some cosmetics that are returning from past seasons and events. First we have the rewards for the Wish You Were Here event. 
These have been added to their respective outpost shops with the cartographer tattoo and the refined gold cutlass, spyglass, and speaking trumpet, all now available for doubloons. We also saw the return of Season 5 Legacy Cosmetics, so some of these things include the Bell Brigade clothing set, some one-off unique items, and for Pirate Legends you can get the Merrick's Tankard and Grimm's Jacket. So that's pretty cool because the Merrick's Tankard is one of my favorite tankards in the game. It's basically like a shark tooth. So that's really cool. If you didn't get it before, I definitely recommend trying to get it now because it's definitely one of the best tankards in the game, in my opinion. Something to note about this is that if you're looking forward to the limited time ancient gold items, those will remain exclusive to Season 5 players. So, sorry about that if you're really interested in those. Honestly, in my opinion, they weren't that great looking to begin with. So, don't feel like you missed out too much if you can't get them now. I think the other stuff that did return are the cooler cosmetics that we got. Some other updates, and this is some interesting stuff. Report a player has had an expanded menu options with the ability to report for movement exploits, aiming exploits, and toxic behavior. With this though, there's no way to like record a clip or a screenshot and send it back to them. So I don't really see this as being that viable still, because if you need to report something, it makes much more sense to report, you know, like a video or a clip or a picture or something and then send it through the website so that they can actually see what's going on and they'll actually take action that way. When you do it through the game like this and there's no way for them to verify anything, it just doesn't really work, you know, that well. Following that, we have something that I think is interesting and slightly annoying to me. I don't think it's a big deal. I want to preface that. So this is like what I'm about to say is not like, a, oh no, the game is dying or anything. But it is just, a, it gives me like a yucky feeling um, just kind of seeing this. So they added the Pirate Emporium to the quick menu. So like where your pirate log and everything is and where the Adventures tab used to be. They've now replaced what the Adventures tab used to be with the Pirate Emporium. So we lost content in the game, and now they've made it so that instead of having that place where you used to see what that content was going to be, it is now just another way to spend money in the game. And I don't know about y'all, I don't think I have any issue spending money in this game, as you can see by me buying the PlayStation 5 version of the game after already having the PC version. I think I've spent enough money, so having it kind of now in our face all the time with either the pop-ups on the front menu where it's like always like, oh, go buy this or do this thing, and now every time you want to go to like the pause menu to look at your, you know, season pass or, you know, accommodation or whatever, you're always going to have to see that Pirate Emporium every time. With that all said though, I don't think this is a big deal. I think it also is nice if you need to be able to get that free emote so you don't have to go all the way to that shop but then again I just don't really see this as like a pro consumer move it feels like it, it, it feels a little too soon after the removal of adventures it really feels like okay we got rid of adventures so now we can put pirate emporium here I don't know I just don't like it I'd love to hear y'all's thoughts in the comments below about that another change up with the pirate emporium that I think is interesting is that they removed the ability to purchase Pirate Emporium stuff with your local currency. So now I think uh, basically the way that I'm interpreting this is that it's always going to be converted to either pounds, which is where rare is, or it might be converted to USD because that's kind of more of a universal standard for purchasing. I'm interested to see how that actually works or if there's going to be a price increase with ancient coins because obviously local currency made it so that it would be cheaper in some regions. It would be price considered to the value of your currency and stuff like that. So I'm curious how this is going to work. Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe it's just really a UI thing and not really a, you know, change of pricing or anything like that. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't really have too much information about that now. But let's move on to one other thing that I actually don't really understand too much with the differences. But it basically says Port Merrick front end menu change. And it says the tavern location for the front end is now using the recently constructed Port Merrick Tavern. I don't really know what the front end menu of Port Merrick is, so I'm a little confused what this is even referring to, but I guess cool. I mean, that's a good thing, I guess. Let me know what y'all think about this if maybe I'm overlooking something or if this is like 
related to some like kind of accommodation or whatever. I, I'm not really sure what they're referring to with that particular update. One more big improvement with this update is that we are finally back to six ships with an 18 player limit in the game. That's something that people have been wanting for a long time and I think it will really help not make the seas feel so empty. Obviously it's just one more ship. We were doing five ships before this change but six ships is even better. So I'm excited to see this. I think this is probably going to be the biggest impacting thing from this entire update. Other than that, there was a handful of bug fixes like we normally get with these monthly updates. Really the only thing that stood out to me is that skeletons have now gotten an update so that they actually will repair their ship when it's damaged during a skeleton ship battle. So, you know, they were always supposed to do that, so this isn't like a change, this is just fixing a bug for that. Um, I actually didn't even notice that that was happening, so I'm kind of surprised that that was an issue. I'm curious to see how long that was actually going on for. Other than that, there is one thing that is really interesting with this update, and it kind of tells me that this update was rushed out and they didn't work on it for long enough because it says, due to an issue discovered in this update, players will not have the option to select and join an open crew session from the front end menu. The team are working to resolve this issue and restore open crew matchmaking as part of our full season 12 update on April 30th. You know, April 30th is right around on Tuesday, so it's really not that big of a deal, in my opinion, if they do get it patched on Tuesday. What I would say, though, is this feels rushed. Like, this is like a feature that's been in the game since, like, the very beginning or close to the very beginning, having open crew. So, the fact that you didn't even test that tells me that this update was kind of rushed and it should have been tested more either with insiders or just in, you know, in-studio testing. With that said, though, some interesting changes. I really thought this was just going to be a smaller update, you know, leading up to the big update next week. But with the changes to the Chest of Fortune and the, you know, the expansion of the Fate of Fortune set, as well as the Outpost Cosmetics that we got, this actually is a pretty sizable update for April. But with that said, let me know all your thoughts about all, everything we discussed in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all later. Bye, y'all.